Hi, welcome to DevFest Sri Lanka. Today we're going to talk about level up your DevOps with GitHub Actions and Kubernetes. Here's the part where I tell you I am definitely going to post the slides on my site tonight. Except for in this talk, there are no slides. Now the code that we're going to build is up on GitHub. So let's head off to GitHub. Here's that. Ooh, yeah, we don't have any code yet. Let's go build it. We'll build a DevOps pipeline live during this session. We'll scaffold out a website, build up a DevOps pipeline, and push that container into Kubernetes. That'll be cool. To be able to get at this URL, you can head over to robrich.org and click on Presentations. And here's Level Up Your DevOps with GitHub Actions and Kubernetes. The code is available right now. Feel free to fork it, learn from it, and maybe use this technique in your projects too. So let's dig in. Now we have here an empty folder. So <laughs> there's no content running in the folder, nothing running in Kubernetes. Let's start out by scaffolding a website. Now our first task is .NET new and .NET new will allow us to build up a website really easily. I'm gonna say .NET new MVC. I'll give it a name of level up dev ops and give it an output folder of dot. Now I'm using this just to scaffold out a website that will be really cool for us to use. If I didn't pass in a name, it would use my current folder name. If I didn't pass in an output, it would actually create a subfolder in that. So I would have a demo folder inside my demo folder and thus the two flags. Now let's open this up inside VS Code. And now we have a website. We have controllers here and, oh, <laughs> definitely need to put in my license key there. We have views. Here's our home view, and we can say, instead of just welcome, welcome to DevFest Sri Lanka. That is excellent. Now that we've got a website, we need to get it up into GitHub. So let's create a git ignore file. New file dot git ignore. Ooh, do we want to have some build assets? Yes. Now this is going to create that .vs code folder that will allow us to debug our application if we need to. Now in this case, we're actually just going to run it. So we'll uh, run it inside of containers. So let's just run it, uh, plow forward. This git ignore file. Now here in the git ignore file, we want to ignore the content that we will build. So bin and obj. We also want to ignore user generated content. So the .vs folder, star.user, star.suo. We also want to delete temporary or ignore temporary files, star.log, star.tmp, and anything that we might download. So packages, node, modules. And in the case of this, uh, in this project, we don't have any content that we download in this specific project. So now we have our git ignore file. We've ignored those things that are user specific, those things that we would download, those things that we would build, and any temp files. Now, our next step is to start off building the Docker content. We're going to create a new file, and we'll call this .docker ignore. Now, this .docker ignore has an identical syntax to a .git ignore file. In fact, if you have a .git ignore but not a .docker ignore, you'll actually use your .git ignore instead. That's perfect. Now we'll want our same level of content. We don't want to include content that we'll build, content that we'll download, user-specific content, or temp files. But then we also have one more section that we want to add here. We want to ignore dev-specific content. So in this case, app settings.development.json. And also in here, launch settings.json. Now, those are development specific details. The launch settings.json is all of the environment variables that we would need to debug. And app settings.development is all of the configuration details to debug. We don't want that in our production container. Now that we have a .docker file, let's create a Docker file. Docker file. Now, alongside of our .docker ignore, this Docker file is that configuration as code that allows us to build up our application. Now, it's important that this be named Docker file and not Docker file.txt. So if you accidentally named it .txt, easy enough, pull off the .txt, and now it is just Docker file. 
Now I have the Docker extension installed into Visual Studio, so I have this nice icon there. Now there's four sets of commands that we're gonna take a look at today. And with these four set of Docker commands, you can do pretty much anything inside of Docker. We'll start with from, we'll have a copy, we'll have some run commands, and CMD, which is the final thing that will get executed as our image starts as a container. Now with these four commands, you can probably do most everything in Docker files. And if you know these four commands, you can probably read pretty much every Docker file. That's perfect. So let's start off with from. Now we wanna build on the shoulders of giants, so let's go find a base image that we can build from. I'm gonna to go to hub.docker.com, I will search for .net, and here in the .net project, I will take a look at the repositories that they have. Now in this case, this is a meta repository, so there aren't any containers to download, but we have the .NET samples. That's great for taking a look at Docker files built in various ways. Runtime depths, that's what you would need in a machine to be able to install .NET, but .NET isn't installed yet. .NET runtime builds on top of that, installing the content that we would need to run console applications. On top of that is ASP.NET, the content that we would need to host web servers. And on top of that is the SDK, that allows us to build content. Now we want to build inside of our container, so let's pop open this one. Now here's that base image that we need, and scrolling down we can take a look at the various labels that are available. Now if we just use 6.0 the way they had identified above, we would be built on top of Debian. But there's also a 6.0 Alpine built on top of Alpine, which is a really small Linux OS. Let's do that. So back here in VS Code, we will do 6.0-alpine, and now we're ready to go to start building our content. Now we wanna copy everything from the folder where we run our docker build command into the current folder inside of our image. Now what is that folder? Workdir slash src. Now I could definitely put it in var lib something or anywhere that I wanted to, but in this case, I'll just put it in src. I think that's a good spot for it. Now, if we were to run this from a command line, we would run a, run a few commands. .NET restore, that will restore all of our NuGet packages. .NET build, we wanna build in release mode. .NET test, that will run all of our unit tests. We'll also wanna do that in release mode, so we don't end up with one release build and one debug build. And then finally, .NET publish. And we'll publish in release mode and we will publish to the dist folder. Now this is much like that right click inside of Visual Studio or much like that content that we would get out of a build. Now this is the content that we'll want to push to our web server that allows us to be able to run our application. It removes all of our source code and just grabs the executables and the public JavaScript and CSS files. Now, all of these are the commands that we would run from the console, so let's run them inside of our Docker image. We'll run that one, and run that one, and run that one, and run that one, and now we've got the content running inside of our Docker image. Now, each of these are done during build time, so the result is the content with all of those already built. Now, there are a few environment variables that we're gonna want to set so let's go grab these environment variables, set them in place right here. This says I want to build, uh, or I want to run in production mode, so it'll remove some of those debugging bits and run as optimized as possible. And we're specifically telling it to listen on port 80 and then giving some metadata to Docker or Kubernetes to start on port 80. Now, what is our CMD? This is the command that will start as our image gets started as a container. So let's say .NET level up devops.dll. Now that is now in the dist folder, so let's switch our work dir to slash dist. And now we have a container or an image definition that we could use in production just fine. Now one of the rules of thumb of an image is that you definitely don't want build tools inside your production runtime image. We have our build tools and our source code here in our production image. Let's head back to Docker Hub and see if we can solve that. Now here's the ASP.NET one. That includes the uh, web runtime, but it does not include the build tools. So we'll grab this image, and scrolling down a little bit, we can see that it also has an Alpine variant. 
So let's use that. I'm going to split this image in half, and I'm going to say from ASP.NET Alpine. And now we have two different images. We can say that this one is our production runtime image, server image. And we can say that this one is our build server image. Now I put server in air quotes here because they're images, they're not servers, but this is kind of our build server and this is our production runtime. Now that's perfect. We do need to copy our content into place. So let's switch this to app and let's say copy and we'll copy from the dist folder into our current folder. Now, if we left it just like this, it would assume that the dist folder was out here on our local machine. Instead, let's copy from equals build. Now let's label this one as build so that we know where to get it. So now it will copy from build, so from this stage. It'll go grab the dist folder, here's that dist folder, and it will copy it into place. The only content then here in our production runtime image is our built content. That's great. Now there's one other place that we can clean up here. Right now we're copying our content and then we're running .NET Restore. Each of these commands will create a separate layer inside of Docker. And we can leverage that process to make it easier next time. Instead of copying all of our content and then restoring it, let's restore and then copy. Now that means if I come in here and I change a JavaScript file or a CSS file, it won't need to re-download my image, my NuGet packages, because those libraries will already be cached in this layer. Now we do need to copy in our manifest. So let's copy in level up devops.csproj into the current folder, and that will get our manifest. Then we'll restore our NuGet packages. Then we'll copy in everything else, build, test, and publish. And if any of our tests fail or if our build fails, then it'll stop here and never get to the next phase. But once we've published, then it will kick off this process that will copy that content into our new image. Great. Now we have a set that is ready to go and we followed that best practice of not putting a compiler in our production runtime image and we've been able to leverage Docker caching to do some really interesting things. So we've got our website, we've got our Docker set up ready to go. Let's add a readme file. I'm gonna add a new file, readme.md, and let's put some content here inside this readme. There we go. Now that we've got our Docker set up in place, let's add our Kubernetes file. Now, <laughs> as is often the case, we'll just go copy the one that we built last time, and so let's go pull this into place. And yep, we just need to replace last time with um, level up dev ops. Now this Kubernetes YAML file includes a deployment. In this case, we're only gonna uh, start one instance, but we could definitely start three if we wanted to. Um, it contains a service that will load balance across all of those instances and an ingress that will match our host name together with our service. Now this is perfect. We might want to adjust other things, but we do have these labels that we're gonna replace at runtime. Now, we very specifically won't replace them at build time because we don't want to, uh, or at development time, because we don't want these things to end up in our source control. These secrets need to stay secret. And swapping them out at build time will allow us to, for example, put in our git hash here. That's perfect. Now, if we have our git hash as our image label, then anytime we have a concern, we know exactly what version of the software was able to create this content. So we've got our Kubernetes YAML file, and now let's start committing our content. I'll come here and we can take a look through our system. Did we commit anything that is user specific or anything that's built or anything that's um, temporary? Nope. We could also take a look at each file, but because we've created every file, this view isn't super interesting yet. So let's close all these pieces and we'll say, create website and Docker file, and we'll 
Oh, <laughs> yes, I do want to stage all these things before I commit. Thank you, VS Code. Let's commit it. There. Now with all that content um, committed, we can say git push origin main, and that will send it up to the server. Cool. Now that we've got our content here on the server, what was an empty project now has lots of content in it. Grab this content from robrich.org, and you can fork this repository and continue learning. So we've got our content into place. Now we want to build a build file. Now, I said this repository was mostly empty. There are a few things that I did do before we did it. I went in here into secrets, and I created a whole bunch of secrets specific for this repository. Now, that's great. These secrets will, mean, will be secret. I can create a new secret, give it a name, your secret, and give it a value. And once I push add secret, that value is never recoverable again. Perfect. So we have secrets that we can use here in our build, ACR password, URL, username. That'll be great for being able to log into our private container registry. We also have the AKS URL and the cube config, the things that we'll need to be able to authenticate and use in our Kubernetes setup. Next, let's start here with actions. Now, we can set up an action. It will suggest some for us, a Dino project or a .NET project. We can deploy to various clouds. <coughs> <coughs> the Terraform setup, that's pretty cool. And there are a whole lot more mechanisms here where we can look at as well. But in our case, let's set up a workflow all uh, on our own. Now I'm going to call this docker kubernetes.yaml. But you can definitely name it whatever you'd like. Now, in this case, I'm going to say docker build and push Kubernetes apply. That's what we want to do in this build. Now, when will it run? Now, we want to do it on pushes to the main branch. We'll come back to pull requests. But this workflow dispatch is actually really helpful. If we have a workflow dispatch, then we'll have a run button inside of our build where we can manually run it. Now, what do we want to do? Well. Uh, we definitely want to start by running on Ubuntu. That's perfect. And then we'll begin by checking out our content. And now we can either run some commands, or in this case, I'm going to run a multi-stage command. That'll be great for being able to build. And here's what I'm going to do. Docker build and push kubectl apply. To start off with, let's do that Docker build. Docker build, I'll give it my uh, tag of level up dev ops, and I will build in the current folder. Now, I do want to leverage those secrets, so let's take a look at our docs. Once we've created the secrets, we can come in here and start to use them with this syntax, the dollar curly curly, and our secret name, our secrets dot our secret name. So let's do that. Now, I want to do my uh, secrets.acr URL, that will allow me to be able to push this into my repository. Now, I've got that in place. Let me also give it a version, and I'll give it a version of github.sha. That is the git hash associated with this commit. Now, whenever I want to understand what source code built this particular container, I know exactly what that github sha was. Okay. So once we've built our container, we'll run all of those steps in our Docker build file. Now let's Docker push this to our registry. Uh, go grab our image name. Now to be able to push this to a registry, we first need to log into our Docker registry. Let's come here into our marketplace and we'll take a look at that. Let's search for Docker login and this one looks like it'll do a good one. Yep. Let's copy that, and we will set it in place right there. Now, we do need to indent it properly, so let's indent it to there. And now let's start to configure it. Our first step is to set the registry. We've got a secret for that, secrets.acr URL. 
And the next one is our username. We've got a secret for that. Secrets.acr username. The next is our password. We've got a secret for that. So let's go grab secrets.acr password. Perfect. And now log out. Now we're gonna say true. If we're running on a shared host, maybe we have a common build agent, we definitely wanna clear out our secrets at the end of our run. Now this isn't at the end of this task, but rather at the end of this entire build run. That's ideal if we're on a shared host. In this case, GitHub already purges our build agent once we're done with it. So this is just kind of good hygiene. Now that we're logged into our Docker registry, when we push our content, that will definitely go up to Docker Hub and we'll be ready to go. The next thing we want to do is a kubectl apply. And we've got that kds.yaml file. And so we can apply that into our Kubernetes, red, uh, Kubernetes cluster to be able to get this content running. Now we do need to log into our Kubernetes cluster. Let's head back out to the marketplace and look for Kubernetes set context. Here's one. This one looks like it'll work. Now I could definitely dig into the full marketplace listing that might show me the various pieces about this agent. I can likely get to the source code that creates this, all of the different configuration options. But in this case, all I really need is this YAML. So I'm gonna copy that and let's set that in place right here. I'll probably need to indent it a little bit better. So let's um, grab this and indent it like that. There we go. Now we've got this ready to go. Now, what do we want to do? Well, we are gonna use the cube config method. Um, I've got a secret for the cube config. So let's go grab secrets.cube config. I grabbed this from the details inside my .cube file in my uh, user home directory. And now we don't need the rest of this content because we didn't use those methods. Cool. So we've logged into our Kubernetes cluster that now we can apply the con content, but we did have those replacement variables. Um, here in our Kubernetes YAML file, we have image label and ACR URL. Let's go replace those ACR URL image label and also AKS URL here. So back in GitHub Actions, let's go add this said line. Now, this said line is a little bit hairy, so I'll just copy and paste it into place. And let's take a look at the content that we have here. Now, we're going to replace this content in our Kubernetes YAML file. We're going to replace it without creating a backup. We're gonna go look for the ACR URL and replace it with the secret. Now I'm assuming that the secret doesn't have a slash in it, otherwise I would need to use a different character here. We'll also replace the AKS URL with the AKS URL and the image label with the GitHub SHA. Now that's perfect. I want to very specifically do this here after I've already built and pushed my content. Now I could definitely do it here, but if I did it here and for example, here in our docker ignore file, I forgot to add kds.yaml, then that secret would end up baked into my container. Now that's really not good. We don't want our secrets to leak farther than we expect. So I don't want to do it first thing. I want to do it only after I've built and pushed my container to my registry. At that point, now I know those secrets aren't embedded in my container. Okay, so here's our build. We uh, check out our content, we log into Docker, we log into Kubernetes, then we build our content running each of the steps in our Docker build file. We'll push that content into um, our private registry and then we'll replace our secrets and finally push that content into Kubernetes. That's great. Let's start our commit. Um, add, uh, add GitHub dev, Ops pipeline, and we'll commit this. Now the cool part here is this just commits it as one of the files in our repository. So if we come in here and we say git pull, then now it's just another one of the files. We could continue editing it here inside of our 
uh, IDE of choice. Or we could come back in here to GitHub Actions and um, click on Edit. And that gets us back to the editor where we have the marketplace. Now, the cool thing is because we have this file inside the workflows folder, we also kicked off a build. Here's that build that it's running. Let's go into the details and take a look at the build that's doing the thing. So it's going to log into Docker. It will log into Kubernetes. It will run each of the steps in our Docker file. And once it's done, it will push that content into our registry and, <coughs> and finally start that content inside of Kubernetes. It looks like we've got the content um, on our way up to our private container registry. And now we've done a kubectl apply. And it looks like that build has succeeded. Excellent. Now, it does take a while for the, um, the uh, DNS to update based on our host here. So let's use Kubernetes proxy to be able to get at our content. Now we could proxy, we could port forward into a particular pod, we could port forward into a deployment, we could port forward into a service. Let's do that. Let's port forward into the service. So kubectl port forward service slash level up dev ops. And we'll go from port 80 on our local machine to port 80 on the service. But if I have something running on port 80 on my local machine, I'll flip over to port 8080 just to avoid a conflict. OK, so let's fire up our website, localhost 8080. And we can see our content running inside of Kubernetes. Welcome to DevFest Sri Lanka. That is perfect. Now, we did do some uh, things here that we might want to tidy up. We talked about pull requests. So let's talk about pull requests and how we might integrate that. It also might be helpful for us to add a status badge here in our readme. So let's do that as well. Now here to get our status badge, we'll come into actions and we'll take a look at our build and let's hit the dots to be able to create status badge. Here's that markdown that we're gonna need. Copy that, come back here into our file and nope, the readme file. Let's put that status badge right there. Great, we've got the status badge in place. Now let's talk about um, pull requests. We have this build and we want to do a similar thing. We could definitely uh, create if statements that would talk about if we're running on a particular branch, but instead let's just create a whole separate build for our um, pull requests, docker pr.yaml. Now it is going to be based on the steps that we have here. So let's start with this and we'll paste it into place. And instead of Docker build and push, we'll say Docker build a PR. And so let's do the Docker build a PR here. Now we still want to run all of the steps in our Docker file that will do all of these steps that will build and validate and publish our content. We just don't want to actually publish it to Kubernetes. So we don't want to do the kubectl apply. Let's delete that line. Because we're not doing a kubectl apply, we don't first need to log into Kubernetes. Let's delete that line. We don't need to replace our secrets because we're not deploying. So let's remove that line. We also don't want to push this image into our container registry because, well, we don't want to accidentally run a build from a an untrusted source. And so we probably don't even need to create this secret right here because we're not going to push. And so to that end, we don't need even need to Docker login. We might even just say PR. Now it's going to throw away this image as soon as it finishes building it. We're not going to push it anywhere, but we still will run all of the steps in our Docker file to be able to validate our content. Now here on the branches, we want to run not on main, but on all of the rest of the branches. That's great if we're gonna build a pull request as a, a collaborator inside this repository. But we also want to um, pull request. We also want to do this for pull requests. And here we're going to do it on all branches. Now this is great for external collaborators who don't have uh, rights to be able to push branches into this repository. 
For those collaborators, we'll use this. For external people, the community contributing will use this. And thus, we'll have both of those in place. Perfect. So now let's come in here. We'll stage all of our changes. We can take a look at the diffs here. Uh, what did we change here? It looks like we changed some white space. That's interesting. We did modify our readme file to add the badge. We um, added the KDS YAML file to our Docker ignore. Good thing that we uh, came back to do that. So now let's say add status badge and PR build. Commit. Now let's push that. Git push origin main. And now that content is ready to go inside of GitHub. Now, because we kicked off, because we pushed content into our main branch, then that definitely kicked off a new build. We could definitely go in this way, but let's go in the other way instead. I'm going to click on Actions, and now we can see our two different builds. We could filter by a particular build, at which point it would only show the builds for that, or we could click on All Workflows, where we see all of our builds. Let's jump into this build. Now we have our build status, build stage. So we start off by doing a Docker login, a Kubernetes login, and then we do each of the steps inside of our Docker file. We're going to uh, restore our NuGet packages. We'll do a .NET build. It looks like our build succeeded. We'll run all of our tests. We have no failing tests because we have no tests. We'll publish that content, switch over to the new stage where we package up that content. Now outside of our Docker file, we will push that to our container registry, and finally, we'll start the new version inside of Kubernetes. Now, the cool part is all of that happens on this shared host, and we didn't need to worry about any of setting up the hardware or validating what versions we had installed. All of that was done for us by Docker Hub and now, or by GitHub. And now that we have our build succeeding, we have this great status badge that shows us our build passing. This code is now available online in the repository we just built. And you can get to it really easily from Rob Rich. Click on Presentations and jump straight into Level Up Your DevOps with GitHub Actions and Kubernetes. I'll meet you in that spot where the conference has designated for a live Q&A. Or if you're watching this video later, hit me up on Twitter at Rob underscore Rich. And let's continue the conversation. Thanks for joining us here at DevOps Days Sri Lanka. See ya.